G'day and welcome to Grizzly and Bear Overland. This video is going to be a Tuesday video if I can get it uploaded and it's going to be a little bit different. Now as you guys probably know if you've been following the Friday videos Steffi announced a couple of weeks ago that she's going on a little vacation, a little break away from editing that is. And I will quickly now apologize for the, oh, my stick just fell over, <laughs> the rawness of this video. We're filming this video from our little adventure, Steffi's dream that she announced uh, just recently that she was going to attempt. So it's completely unedited. Uh, we're filming on the phone, so excuse background noises and, and poor quality, but we thought we'd take this opportunity to do a little bit of a tech gear review from our current adventure which I'm not going to uh, give away too much information because Steffi, although she's having a break from editing, she will be um, making a video and documenting this current adventure because we've been getting some incredible footage. I will say we are still overlanding. We're overlanding just a little bit differently and this overland track of a thousand kilometers is by foot. I need to pick up my pole, one second. <laughs> so, <laughs> What I wanted to do today uh, was just go through what I'm wearing. What am I going to wear or what have I been wearing? We're already 400 kilometers into this little adventure to do something like this. I'm going to start from bottom, you reckon, Steffi? Yeah. Bottom to top. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Steffi is here. So on my feet, I recently, within the last couple of years, have started to do Oops, all of sorry. my long distance hiking, um, running, walking, approach to the crags, everything in trail running shoes. So I've chosen to do this particular hike in a pair of Ultra Olympus 4 trail running shoes. Now these things are absolutely awesome. I'm almost going to say that they are possibly the best shoe that I've ever worn in my life. They're incredible. Absolutely awesome shoes. No affiliation with any of the brands that I'm going to mention in this um Video, by the way, just our personal opinion. Now, they're uh, so far with 400 kilometers uh, in, they're looking in very, very good condition. They're uh, Vibram, are they? Yep. Yes. Vibram rubber, which I do very, very much uh, like. Now, I'm wearing a set of gaiters. Am I uh, a bit took, too close? Uh, it... Are they the shoes? Are they um... oh, sorry. a gift? They were a gift from our very good friend, Dr. Henry. So, she share, she share. Mr. Henry, uh, it was very nice of him in Taiwan. Do you um, get Gore-Tex? No, I don't. Good point. Um, no Gore-Tex. And that's only something in the last couple of years that I have realized that Gore-Tex is just not necessary on the shoes. Not for what we do anyway. Remembering that all the, all the advice, all what I talk about here is our personal opinion and specific to the adventures that we do. I chose a shoe, not a high top boot. That was something else I wanted to quickly speak about. Um, I've tried both. I did many, many years with boots, but they're heavy and Gore-Tex boots, doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're doing a long distance hike, they're going to get wet. The only difference is they'll either get wet from the inside with sweat or you'll step in a knee deep puddle and then they'll get wet inside and they don't dry as quickly. So these shoes, they breathe very easily. Um, you're going to get soaking wet feet anyway. So I just deal with it. Um, no, we'll set, we're still down here. So I wear gaiters on, uh, on my shoes, very important. Doesn't matter what type of gaiters I think you can use. Uh, some people like the big heavy duty canvas ones. Steffi wears um, a little bit heavy, heavier duty than what I've got, but something to stop those pebbles and sticks or sand getting into your shoe. Now these gaiters are just very, very lightweight, very basic, and these are specific to the Ultra shoes. And uh, just clip on, bit of, bit of Velcro at the back there. And they are fantastic. And I will say, touch wood, oh, dirty socks. <laughs> I will say that um, I haven't had a pebble in my shoe in the 400 kilometers that we've walked so far. So I think they're working pretty good. What's this? All right, so here I do have, I'll start on the inside. This gray sock here is an inner sock. It's a toe sock. So like a, how can I explain this? Like the little, the uh, it's got little, Fingers for toes. your toes, <laughs> toes, <laughs> and that's an anti blister sock. And this is, cotton? I'm not sure, is it cotton? Yeah, I think it's cotton. It's cotton, maybe very thin, but all that does is stop your toes from rubbing skin on skin together. 
and I think I, we can we can definitely confirm that it stops blisters. I've had no blisters so far between my toes on this trip. Usually do, no matter what shoes I'm getting or wearing. So I've got the toe socks. Um, wearing the toe socks. We did try them before we came on this hike um, to just to be sure that they they were going to be comfortable and not annoy us. So the toe socks. Outside of that, I've got an ankle high merino. Um, not not super thick, but a, a merino uh, sock, just a normal sock at uh, ankle sock. Then I'm wearing what I always wear, my calf compressions. Now these things are not socks, obviously, because I've got the, the smaller socks on. I really do believe that the compression stuff does help reduce fatigue, uh, improves the blood circulation and prevents cramping, along with a lot of stretching, obviously. But I, I do believe, each to their own, but I believe the compression stuff works really, really well. In compression, you also have the skins. And that's exactly right. Yeah, moving up. I'm going to show, show off a bit of leg here. Now, they, they're a bit worn. I've had these for many years, but these things are the best. Now, I've got the, uh, as underwear, I'm wearing the skins. There's many different types of compression underwear or compression sort of leggings, if you want to wear the full leggings. But I've been wearing these rock climbing, hiking, running for oh, 10, 10, 12 years now. Maybe longer. So the skins are very, very good and I, I do rate them. They also prevent a little bit of chafing, which can sometimes be an issue on a hike. I did have a little bit of that at the beginning of this hike. Uh, moving shorts. up. Again, shorts. Yeah, let's talk about shorts and why I super, choose. Super light. Super lightweight. They're just running shorts from Kathmandu. Dry. Uh, they dry very, very quickly. They're thin. They're, they're, like we mentioned they're super lightweight. And very important when you're looking at what you're going to wear on a long distance hike or any sort of hike is to notice the inside, the seams. If there's any heavy duty seams or like anything that can rub pretty much. You're going to be carrying a medium to heavy backpack um for a long long time so anywhere that there can be abrasion or backpack rubbing against something else that can then in turn rub against your skin be very very wary of it and so i try and get stuff like this with elastic big nice band of elastic there it's nice and flat it does have a drawstring in it in case i'm lucky enough to lose a little bit of weight on this hike but the amount we're eating at the moment that might not happen but the drawstring as well is flat You'll see it's a flat one. It's not a round corded one because I found with the, the thicker drawstring around cord one, my backpack uh, waist strap will rub against that, which then rubs on my hips. And you'd be surprised after many, many, many kilometers that will wear through your skin and become very uncomfortable. The shorts are, had a net inside, but I cut them off. Oh uh, yeah, that's true. The little netting or whatever it was. But yeah, that was unnecessary. Reduced a bit of weight. So we, we cut that out. Hat up, Steffi. Yeah, I can see <laughs> um, all right, Shirt. moving, moving up. Yeah, we talk shorts. Moving up, t-shirt. Uh, this is just a basic. Australians all know the brand Bonds. Bonds do underwear. They do cotton stuff, so cotton uh, material. This is a hundred percent cotton t-shirt. It's actually an undershirt, meant to be worn under a shirt. Uh, it's perfect. I chose this one. I do carry. I have got with me a very lightweight, small merino t-shirt as well. I've tried both over the years. And I do believe 100% cotton for the environment that we're walking in at the moment um, is absolutely perfect. It's uh, it's a bit more breathable, I've found. In the merino, I was getting a really sweaty back in between the backpack. And in the cotton, it's uh, very, very good. Try to avoid synthetic materials. Uh, is that what they call polyesters or... The other sort of materials. Sports, the sports one. Yeah, sports sort of. That, <laughs> yeah. I don't know the other they fabric smell because really bad. <laughs> does it stink? It stinks real bad. So yeah. after Cotton uh, after the maybe we've been the longest we've been without a shower is seven days so far on this hike. So yeah, you become a bit on the nose and synthetic materials and that they mm. stink so much quicker than than any other materials. And this is good because it's got no no seam. Yeah. here. Another big thing to avoid, if you can, is any sort of uh, seam that sticks out a long way or anything, because again, your backpack straps are going to be rubbing hard against that on your shoulders. So this one, no seam, very basic. Um, no, it wasn't expensive, and uh, uh, that's it. Yeah, Bonds t-shirt, so each to their own on that one. I will mention too that it's the middle of winter here in Australia. Admittedly, we don't get so severe a winter it's not going into the minus degrees by a long long way we're not hiking through snow but it can get chilly doesn't matter rain hail or shine i will hike in shorts and a t-shirt reason being 
is that um, I've always found that you're going to heat up, especially with a lot of hills. We've got a lot of ups and downs on this. doesn't matter how cold it is. If you're hiking hard with a heavy backpack, you will warm up. You'll heat up very, very quickly. You wear all the, the waterproof pants and the outer jackets and everything. You're going to end up wet anyway. You'll end up soaking wet, but it'll be with your own sweat inside your Gore-Tex gear or your waterproof gear rather than just rainwater. It, you're going to end up wet. I'd prefer to be drenched with rainwater than in my own sweat. So again, each to their own. Oh, Steffi's pointing at my hat. Love it or hate it, this is the hat I chose for the hike. I like it because Lee is often hiking ahead of me, but I can spot him. And it's the same color as the track. Ah, that's the, true. It's the, the logo. Bib. Color the logo. of the bib. I can't remember what it means. I think it means good luck in, uh, in Chinese. Uh, this was a gift from Aswei our surfer mate on the south coast of Taiwan, so she share. But anyway, a Light, hat. Lightweight. Well, yeah, it's super lightweight. It's nothing. That was a primary reason I chose this hat. Um, it is nice and visible, as Steffi said, so, you know, if anything happened, it can be spotted quite easily through the bush. Um, no matter what hat you choose, a hat is essential, uh, whether it's winter, whether it's um, anything. Steffi's chosen more of a wide-brim floppy hat. I usually do, but for this hike, I knew that we'd... Um, it's winter, we were going to have not severe uh, uh, sun, and we're in the forest a lot of the time with tree cover. No need for neck protection so much. No, we didn't need the, some people like to hike with the neck protection, we didn't bring it. And we chose not to bring sunglasses on this trip because we knew we were going to be walking north to south. It's winter, the sun is low on the sky, so we're walking with the sun at our backs pretty much 90% 90, 90 of the time. So um, didn't bother with sunglasses backpack uh, backpack just quickly what we will do if uh, if you guys enjoy this video we'll make this uh, a regular thing when we can upload videos we're in and out of reception at the moment um, and we'll do a proper breakdown of the of the backpack uh, and maybe a gear review of why we chose this backpack I will just mention it's uh, Gossamer gear Mariposa 60 60 liter backpack is this one really really like the backpack so far we've given it like we say four we did a lot of testing as well before doing this. Just quickly, we... Maybe turn around. Give a little bit of a spin. All right. Yeah, good. It's a nice backpack. I will say, uh, like I said, we'll go into uh, more detail on the backpack and maybe we'll do a full unpacking one day of exactly what we're carrying. I'll quickly mention that my backpack weighs, I would say, on average between 13 kilograms to 16 kilograms maximum. Maybe 16 and a half has been the heaviest my pack has been and will be on this entire trip. It's just depending on how much water you've got at the time and how much food we need for that section. Um, what else did I want to mention? Oh, I've got my watch, uh, Garmin Instinct Solar is this watch. Very, very basic, but uh, a watch is pretty essential, I think. It's got, Steffi's got the same. Yeah. Cheshire, Alan, <laughs> a gift from another friend in Taiwan. Um, uh, on my backpack, quickly, I'll mention just here too, I've got my side pockets. Left-hand side here, I keep snacks and uh, just some basic things that I might want. I haven't got anything in there at the moment. but There's no snacks? Uh, no snacks, but I've got a cord <laughs> charger because we're going to charge the phone in a minute. Um, on hand, you want to keep always on the exterior of your backpack the stuff that you might need quickly. Like I, do, I mentioned before, I don't wear the Gore-Tex. But um, I do have it on hand there because it depends. In, and actually, the Gore-Tex has only been worn in extremely cold, windy conditions on this trip so far. In the rain, I haven't bothered. Uh, so yeah, I on do. hand. <laughs> oh, and this one, big one here, the Camelback. I choose to walk with a Camelback. It's a two liter water bladder that sits on top of everything in my backpack there. I just find that it's, it's the best way to be sure that you maintain your hydration as you hike. If you've got a water bottle, even if it is accessible like this one is, it's still, you're walking, you you're in the stop. zone, you can't be bothered. I don't stop, bothered. I don't drink enough. <laughs> yeah, Steffi doesn't drink enough because she hasn't got a Camelback. Yeah, I didn't go for um, Camelback. I, I really do, I highly recommend the Camelback because you can, what I do is every 30 minutes, every hour, I just make sure I take four sips on the Camelback on the uh, on the water here and I know that all all day rather than okay I've got to try and get this water bottle out the side here it's not going to happen um right. yes here camelback is the way to go now let's just talk quickly about these my hiking poles love them or hate them I love them now and I am going to admit that I used to when I was younger up younger I would say only up till about three years ago 
was when I discovered the joys, the beauty of, of hiking, walking, whatever, with the poles. Now, I used to, I will admit, I used to look at these things and people with these things and think that the hiking poles were a bit of a sign of weakness. And I always vowed, I'll never use hiking poles. Look at me now and how wrong I was. Now, we discovered the benefits of hiking poles. So good. So oh, good. amazing. In Kyrgyzstan, hiking on the ice and snow. And since then, I'm completely converted. And I, I will quickly say why. Um, not only do they alleviate, or some say, we've read online that up to 30% of the weight off of your joints. And if you've got bad knees like me, then that is a big amount. You know, I really do use my upper body and my arms, especially going uphill, to push down on these sticks. So with a heavy pack, um, are we walking? Oh, you want me to walk with the sticks? Yeah. <laughs> you want oh, me to give good. it down? Oh, yeah. oh, Nobody needs a demo. <laughs> <laughs> so these things, incredible. Um, and the other one, the big one, probably even more so than preserving your strength and, and taking a bit of weight off your knees and your legs and the rest of your body is the safety factor. I... I've lost count. I, there's no yeah, way I could every count. Day, every day, numerous. numerous times that these yeah. things save us from falling over. We're walking in the bush in Australia here, which has a lot of, we call it pea gravel, tiny little uh, pebbles that you can slide on. They're like marbles. And we also have gum nuts. There's, there's some just here, yeah. Very, very dangerous. And that can, that can cost you your trip. So a slip, a slip, a rolled ankle, these things. So many times, boom, stop you from falling over. So... Yeah, if you haven't ever tried them and you're a hiker, give them a go All and right. you'll thank me later. Do I have to thank wrap you. this up, do I, yeah, Steffi? Yeah, wrap it up. Okay, thank wrapping it up. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. And uh, yeah, if you guys like this little video. Maybe we can do what's in my bag next time. What's in Steffi's bag? Yeah. Full unpacking and I'll film yeah. Steffi live from the trail. Um, again, we, we didn't let out too much information of what we're doing exactly, but if you do want to... Have a have a have a look where yeah, um, follow us on Instagram. Yeah, on Insta on our new Instagram account, uh, Grizzly cool. and Bear Overland. Yeah. and we are making some patron only videos for our lovely patrons. Thank you guys, and thank, thank you for you understanding. So much. Uh, thank we you. We do some live updates every every hundred or two hundred kilometers. I need to do one now, actually. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Bye. and yeah, any comments, leave them below. See you guys. Can we do this? Ah. <laughs> Bye. See you guys. <laughs> thank you.